Hello everyone, today we are going to a kind of unusual setting. The fact that like not a lot of Japanese themed things happen in London, I knew that this opportunity needed to be seized. So I figured that I'm gonna take you guys along and we're gonna check out this London based Japanese festival. So yeah, shall we? I'm gonna take a bus and here we go. Okay, everyone, I'm currently at the station. Can you guess what I forgot back at home? I forgot my adapter which connects my headphones to my phone. So I don't know if this is gonna be some sort of a meditational trip, but I cannot listen to anything. I cannot listen to Trash Days podcast. I cannot listen to my music. I will just have to be alone with my thoughts. How fun! <laughs> We made it next to Kew Gardens. I have just about now talked with a member of the staff because I had questions about my entry. We still have like 45 minutes. I'm gonna... Nice car. <laughs> I'm going to grab something for a little snack because I'm really hungry. Until then, let's grab something small, yeah? Fortunately, we have received a very handy map that will serve us as a little guide today. Our first stop is the Temper House and from then on we're gonna be following one of the design festival routes. The structure that you're seeing right now is the Temper House, which is the world's largest Victorian glass house. Inside there are over 240 rare species of plants from five continents, which together add up to astonishing 10,000 plants inside of this glass house. I made sure to take you guys here on the weekend so we could together watch the Kasu Giant calligraphy performance. And not to forget, we'll also take a look at the work of Chiharu Shiota, who has suspended around 5,000 haiku with a bright red Japanese festival thread, together creating a giant artwork. And as you can see by the queue, we certainly weren't the only ones looking forward to this.
Our next stop is the Great Pagoda, which is built in the Chinese architectural style and is almost three centuries old. Now we'll make our way through a small bamboo forest leading us to a minka house, which is a traditional house with a thatched roof. That is it guys for a day out in the Kew Gardens and now it's time for dinner. Hello, hello there. Let me drink my coffee from the morning, which I didn't finish. And I can successfully say that I'm back. If anyone has an access to Kew Gardens, definitely give it a try at least once. To be completely honest with you, you probably don't have to see it like a lot of times. I am really glad that I was able to take you along with me. Hopefully I will be able to go on a more solo uh, travel slash adventures in the future because I really enjoyed it and it was for the first time I kind of stepped out of my comfort zone and actually went alone and it can be kind of intimidating especially in London. Not gonna comment why. We all know why. After the trip I went to eat the ramen. Ramen was um, Tasty. But the fact that I have never been in Japan, thus I have never had proper Japanese ramen, I cannot really judge it. Not only the ramen shop was really nice aesthetic wise, but I also like the customer service was really nice. So I'm kind of glad that like that was the only ramen shop that popped up in my maps because then I managed to have a really nice time. Let me just say then thank you. I really hope that I was able to convey the experience that I've witnessed today through my own eyes to you through this lens. <laughs> um, if I did and if you enjoyed any part of it, please let me know. I would like to interact with you guys um, and I will see you, you know, the next time when I see you. Hopefully it's not gonna be a year like this time. Hopefully it's gonna be sooner, but you know how it is. Okay guys, um, enjoy your evening or morning or day whenever you're watching this and I'll see you later. Bye.